In the next 10 video demonstrations, I'll show the features of the Liquid Trax uh, LT100. And in this configuration, I have a master Liquid Trax, and we'll show syncing functionality for one or more slave Liquid Trax that uh, can be added to the uh, rig. Right now, the master is in uh, standby mode, big red light. Let me show the interface real quick so we don't have to do that in later videos. There, the entire um, liquid tracks is controlled by this uh, jog dial and there's a select button in the middle there's an up down left and right and then there's a rotary uh, dial in the middle almost like the first generation iPod type of thing to turn the unit on you just hold the uh, select button down for half a second to shut the unit off you hold it down for two seconds the select button and then there's the LCD in the middle and I'll turn it on while we're doing the rest of this the uh, far end um, is the assortment of uh, media cards that you would expect USB memory stick type or hard drive type devices can go in the front USB or right now I have a memory card in the back USB in the behind the unit and then memory stick and compact flash cards and so forth okay when you turn the uh, unit on it automatically will go into preset mode and this is an empty liquid tracks right now so it just shows blank now I have audio files already on my card and uh, what I'm going to do is go into the menu system so let's show that real quick uh, you can see at the very top of the jog dial it says hold uh, for a menu so I'm going to hold the up key um, and when I do that oh, let me go ahead and press it so when I hold it up for about a second and a half uh, I get into the menu system so from here I'm going to set up a bank uh, you have bank um, 0 and 1. I'm going to uh, leave it on bank 0. You can see up on top it tells you what bank is currently selected. And I'm actually just going to do an auto load because I already have uh, files on disk. So auto load, yes. And now it pre programmed all 127 patches. And what I'm now going to do is actually switch over to bank 1 which I already had programmed. Okay, so now I'm going to get out of the menu system real quick just to show the basics. And here you can now see your presets. So the bold three-digit number on top is the preset number from 0 to 127. Then there are a bunch of display icons that will show up here. You'll see them along the way to describe what kind of uh, preset this is, what information is contained within the preset and right now you can see a speaker so that means there's an audio file attached. Uh, the state of the preset right now it's in a stopped state, the timer if it's on and then the name of the track. So I can just simply uh, scroll through my list here, uh, pick a song, hit the select button, you can see that the, oh I need to turn my sound on and um, so now you can see that uh, the presets in play mode I'll hit the select key once and that'll put it into uh, pause mode so you get the idea if I hold the stop key, uh, the select key down just for a little bit it'll put the preset into stop mode if I select a track with uh, more information in it let's say this one has a MIDI file attached so when it loads, well, I thought I had a MIDI file. Let's go ahead and select uh, this one. Bad, yep. Yeah. So you can see the music note uh, attached to the uh, track, and that means that, that there is a, a MIDI file, um, which is actually now uh, playing along with the audio. So that could be uh, controller information. It could be an entire MIDI file, uh, but mostly it's intended to uh, trigger other effects units and so forth, and you can have it synchronized with the uh, audio. So there's an example of a preset with uh, two attachments. I'm going to go ahead and shut that off, 
and uh, go back into the menu system. Again, I'm not going through the, uh, the menu items just yet, just giving you a quick walkthrough. But within the preset, uh, you can see that uh, just by hitting the up and down key, uh, you know you have options to go up and down when you see the arrows up and down and left and right when you have options to go left and right. So here we can edit the name and what track, audio track, uh, applies to it. Some volume and bass and treble. I'll go through all this later, what MIDI files attached to it. You can change the tempos if you need to do that. Uh, delay compensation. Uh, there's a preamp built into the LT100 so you can set the uh, volume uh, at a track level and then also send it MIDI uh, CC messages to uh, change it while you're in performance. Uh, linking, we'll go through that um, in the uh, uh, video about preset menu and uh, so on. So I'm hitting the up and down key and um, that's how I can scroll uh, within parameters. If you hold the up key just like you held it to get into the menu system that'll take you to the top of a, uh, a menu. So I have a bank menu, um, I have a browser play mode which will allow me to just go to my memory card and uh, scroll through the list of whatever is on there and uh, just play it. It's basically to sample what's on your card in case you need to find something. Let me shut that off now. Okay, I'm going to hold the up key. That takes me to the top again. Intermission mode. Intermission mode is where uh, if you're gigging and uh, you're taking a break, uh, you can store a whole bunch of uh, audio files in a, a separate directory called break and it'll just play them. And I believe uh, you can play each of them at once. Uh, you can repeat the entire thing or you can play any of the files that are in random order, kind of like a shuffle type of thing. Okay, get out of there. That's intermission mode. Global settings, we'll have a separate video on that. And then uh, utilities. Uh, you can send and uh, record SysX, and uh, so you could have files, uh, uh, backup files, dumps of other equipment that you might want to have on the road with you, and you, in case of emergency, you can reload other devices, might be firmware. Uh, you can store just about uh, anything you want in SysX form, stick it in the uh, SysX directory on your card, and then when you want to send something, it'll find all the SysX files. Right now I only have one, which is a firmware, and it's not even labeled, but uh, if I click on it, it's going to start sending it out. So that's uh, SysX send. Uh, I can record SysX, which means if I arm this and then send it a dump from another device, it'll record that into a uh, file. Uh, play MIDI, if you have type 0 MIDI files and you need to play something out uh, for whatever your reasons, uh, you can go ahead and uh, uh, store your MIDI in a MIDI directory and play it. You can also record MIDI. So if you're uh, recording uh, sequences, you can uh, go ahead and do that through this uh, menu. And I'll show that later. Uh, make a backup. Uh, prepare media, if you are uh, just getting started and you have an empty uh, media card, USB flash drive, let's say, and you need to get it ready to work with Liquid Tracks, you to go ahead and uh, do a prepare media. And then firmware to up upload the firmware. So that's really how you navigate the system. It's pretty straightforward and uh, each of the menus will go through separately and discuss the complexity of those menu systems.